So anyway, there's two collaborations here that kind of take a nod to the UK culture, right? One collaboration is with Size. I think Size in general have done some really cool collaborations the last few years. I think they haven't really missed so far. They're they're essentially like our version of Kif Size. When it comes to collabs, they do them really well. They're very tastefully done. Uh, the drops are really, you know, are pretty painless. Um, the ordering process is pretty smooth. The stores are really well merchandised. The staff in there are really well knowledgeable. Are really knowledgeable, sorry. And it just seems as if, like, for a big corporation, for something that is a kind of the extension, isn't size the extension of, like, JD Sports and stuff, right? I'm pretty sure, right? Um, they do a really good job at making it seem as if size is, like, a independent, a kind of an independent uh, sneaker store that made it big when really it isn't right really it's a kind of like you know it's a it's a well-oiled machine but i love the, that they give that kind of mom and pop kind of impression again i know it's happy to say it they're not an independent store but i do get the feeling when i go into a size that i am surrounded by all the local kind of like um influential sneakerhead kids that are in the scene at the moment for the most part i, mean, I know when i used to go to size when i used to buy shoes in real life and go to stores and stuff and hang around soho and try and look cool i know that a lot of the kids working in there were people that i knew from forums and stuff so i'm sure it's the same way nowadays it has to be um, they wouldn't do it they wouldn't necessarily employ someone like me to work in a shop or because i'm too old and i'm not really plugged in with the, the cool new kids so they want people that are really plugged in have a good instagram following um you know have good connections and shit because it'll make the store a bit more popping especially when they have releases and stuff so this collab- collaboration they just put out or details of it just got come released recently um it's called so size and nike mx 95 a 20 for 20 inspired by past exclusives right a uh, roll call to the uh, so this says the following um well a well-known uk retailer size is celebrating 20 years in the business which is awesome as part of the anniversary facilities he's teen up with nike for a special mx 95 20 for 20 a true what the style the bold nike sports so shoe draws from Ni- size's 20 best exclusive swoosh brand releases for a rich not to two parties crab history so i'm assuming every crab they've done so far they put it all into one shoe I- i'm wondering why they decided to put it all on a Air Max 95. That's one thing. Maybe it's partly due to the fact that the other show I'm going to show you, the 110s are coming out. Um, that's an interesting choice to make, isn't it? Maybe because of the panels. There's more panels that you can kind of put on there. There's more panels that you can kind of edit, maybe. I don't know. Um, interesting choice. Um, with a variable smorgasbord of tones, textures, and material, 20 for 20 appears to be a true sportswear hodgepodge at first glance, but close inspection reveals a keen attention to detail. Lateral sides are kept traditional, using dark tones, while the blacks and greys plus a recognizable safari print. Uh, meanwhile, the medial sides offer the inverse, uh, swapping each piece in bold hues that run the garment with neon green to enrich purple. Common threads on both feet are provided by light pink mesh overlays, high vis reflective heels, and jet black toe caps. Um, so it's a video as well that kind of details a bit of the experience to see what it's in. of the best. Oh, it's a video as well. Too. Awesome. Nike exclusives on one pair of shoes. That's pretty cool. Is it Nike or size exclusive? Why are they showing Pumas and shit? It's probably Nike only, right? Let's wait here. What do you hear? What do you say? 20 of the best ever size Nike exclusives for okay, shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know what it's showing non Nike shoes. The first one of this pack dropped back in December. It was a black pair. We really love this idea of making something really customizable, really personal, or really unique to however you want to wear it. And you can essentially take off these patches and each pair will get random patches in the box and customize it. We nice. always wanted people to like, create their own patches, create their own shoe. That was the whole point of it. We've seen a massive resurgence of DIY products and mm-hmm. people oh, using them as the base top, they're the top shelf. Oh! Really good and exciting. To I see think I might still have them in my mum's house, actually. It's so good. They've been making their own Those patches. Those ones up there, up there, top left. People have had some Travis Scott Air Force Ones and they've stuck the swooshes on. We've seen loads of stuff on it. And it's that creative nature that we were encouraged. You said you've got eight patches in the box and also there's some limited edition things coming through in certain stores as well. It's just right. giving you the platform to essentially make whatever you want it to be. And what better way than to do it on a classic icon like the Chuck. Now this is the return of something classic. That's so the nice. Nike Air Zoom Spirit on Cage 2 from the early 2000s. I mean, we're seeing a lot more Zoom coming through. Obviously, we've seen on the Kipchoge shoe that uh, Zoom was incorporated into that. And it was almost a technology that was kind of dwarfed by another technology that Nike produced. 
I mean, away from the Zoom pieces, but it's just a great shoe. I mean, the, we've seen the 90s running through, coming through in the last few years, and for me, this is one of the better ones that's kind of come out of that. Yeah, massively. I mean, you see a lot of brands doing it. You, yeah, yeah. And really also, it's so, so journey, sweet. We've seen a few more really high energy and sort of really interesting collaborations on this. So I'm really confused. What is going on here? Is this all of the shoes that they're going to drop during a collaboration, or are these just shoes that they're interested in? I'm not really sure what's happening here. Maybe I'm confused. On this, so it's something for the summer, something we're really passionate and excited about to see come to life, and it's a. Uh, a nod to the celebration of our first store, we can tell you that for now. So, I think give a, a worldwide exclusive. That's wow, what you're nice. For, isn't it? They're so sexy. Oh, so nice. For those of you who don't know, Fast Times of Ridgemont High is a film that was released in 1982 that kind of featured an anti hero. In the film, it unboxes a fresh pair of checkerboards, and, and this is kind of reference to that. This is actually a reference to a shoe that they kind of give away. Okay, so I'm assuming they're all part of the, is they all part of the I pack? As the well, Pumas are there the too. Going fast forward a little bit now. Don't want to watch the whole thing. And then the MX95 is the one thing. What better way to celebrate than to combine all those projects for one moment? And to finally see it come to life, especially when we've been part of a lot of the projects, has been amazing. So nice. I kind of took a brief over to that we felt was potentially maybe a bit unrealistic. 20 of the best ever size Nike exclusives on one pair of shoes. We weren't sure we were going to get it right. This come back, first time. First sample, spot on. Yeah, nice. So from the outside, it looks very traditional in terms of really high yeah. back to the original neon. The insides were the real beauty, but you can't neglect the outside because it's like we're saying, there's 20 pairs of shoes in here. Part I actually like the fact that they shoes. decided to go for like an understated outside and then a uh, wild inner, inner side. I quite like the idea that some, you know, some Nike shoes have the thing where they don't have a swoosh on the instep. I quite like that. I know on some some brands wouldn't want that. They want their brand um, or logo to be visible on all angles. But I like the fact that you can be a bit understated on the instep. Someone could be like, oh, what are those? And then you kind of turn your foot to the side. Oh, shit, they're nice. Oh, they're here. I think that looks quite cool. And I like that. And I like the fact that with these shoes, essentially, you could get away with wearing them in an office that's a bit conservative because they're not allowed all the way around. They're allowed only on the sides that you can kind of see from the... They're allowed only on the sides that you can't see from the instep. So depending on what you wear and your outfit, you can kind of basically turn them up and turn them down. I think that's a pretty cool um, idea. You can't neglect the outside because it's like we're saying, there's 20 pairs of shoes in here. Part of the, the beauty of the shoe is that you can kind of spend your time guessing what which one's which. You can kind of see in there, we've got the, the blazer footbed. You got right. a Dave White reference there with the air bag. I wouldn't give any more than that. No, I don't. Think <laughs> it's sad, isn't it? Because it's such a great shoe. Mini swooshes here. Yeah. Sweet. You get swooshes on the medial side and also on the lateral side in oh, there yes. as well. And you'll also get from the footbeds a black and a white. Woo the two blazers and also on the PSI. That's so nice. One, Hopefully they don't sell out so super quickly because I'd like, like a pair of these. Once it comes to life and you see some of the storytelling in a little bit more detail, all of it will start to reveal. There's lots of different layers to this project. But it'd be nice to see if you guys can comment below and tell us what shoes you think we're referencing on this. Yeah, they're so good, man. I can't wait to see what they look like when they come once they come out. And again, um, so we're back with Lip for the episode size previous for 2020. March installment takes a look at the much... So after MX2020, okay, so I'm not sure if all the other shoes are featured are part of it, but regardless, I think they all look incredible anyway. So that's going to be one amazing one. And then the next 95 I went to feature on the uh, video so far on this episode, it was these ones. The MX95 110 as a nod to London street culture. Now, I like the idea that they're embracing the 110s, Monica, the, the kind of a slang term for MX95s, because back in the days they were 110 pounds. Now I think they're probably a lot more. I'm not too sure. We're a long while time since I bought a pair of uh, a pair for retail price, but I do remember them being very popular, especially during the UK garage times, garage scene times. That was probably when I was still in secondary school. I remember a couple of my friends, a couple of my brothers, older, my couple of my older brothers' friends, when they used to go out, their kind of um, attire of choice was a kind of a long sleeve button up Armani shirt, maybe Ben Sherman, usually Armani Exchange, Ben Sherman, sometimes Versace, plain sort of like blue shirt with some nice black jeans or some nice blue jeans, straight, and then a pair of like Air Max 95 laced up to the top, like or laced a bit loose. Um, that was a really big look, especially the kind of classic colorways, right? The blues, the white with the blues, the kind of the, the classic neons, like all the kind of classic MX-90 colors that you're familiar with, they would just wear those and kind of rock out. So the MX-95 was kind of part of it. And the reason why they'd wear those was because at the time, they were one of the most expensive shoes to get. So it was a bit of a like, uh, it's equivalent to wearing like a pair of Balenciagas, right? Or whatever, or a pair of Christian Louboutins like the guys in the trap do now, or the guys from the hood do nowadays when they got their feet up all the time. But obviously with a 95, you've got the benefit of like, because that's the benefit you've got with like trainers over kind of designer shoes. Designer shoes usually have an element 
that is makes them look expensive. So I don't know if it's an Alexander McQueen, like that stacked sole shoe, it's the sole of it. You don't want to cover them, so you wear skinny jeans. If it's a pair of Louboutins, you always kind of put your feet up so you can see the red bottoms. But with Air Max 95s, because they're such an iconic looking shoe from the pat from the uppers to the midsole to the air bubble to just the, how the laces are, you can see it from afar. You know straight away when someone's wearing a pair of 95, so you can tell exactly, okay, cool, that guy spent £110 on his trainer. So for that kind of like um, comparison, sort of like don't watch face sort of like culture that existed at the, uh, 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 kind of garage nights and the fact that they're super comfortable and you could be on, you know, the dance floor skanking all night long um, is the best thing. Obviously, once you spell a bit of rum on the mesh, you're completely fucked because they're an uh, absolute bitch to clean. Um, anyone that knows them will know um, once you get them fucked up it's kind of over but apart from that one of my favorite air max 90 as well from the collection probably not more so than air max 90 but still one of an actual go in that lineup and i like that they're taking a nod from the 110s and putting it on the i think it's on the label of the of tongue actually i think it's on the tongue they put it on there but let's read quickly the text from hype beast Nike Air Max 95 110 nods to London street culture. It says, when Nike Sergio Lozano designed the Air Max 95 debut in 1995, it was dubbed the 110 by its avid UK fan base and not to its retail price in British pounds. Now in celebration of Nike's 20, oh, the 95 is the 25th anniversary. That's why I probably did it with size. And it's memorial monarchy. And Nike Sports has prepared a 95 110. It's private in London, offering currency-centric details. The 110 is a love letter to the city. Lozano layered upper panels are inspired by the human anatomy and allow for wide-reaching material experimentation. So, so there are so here they're dressed in everything from suede to elephant print to leather to athletically inclined mesh the gray white tan and blue color palette is an acknowledgement of the, of the big smokes urban setting and memorable and memorable architecture sorry uh from cobblestone streets to concrete towers and bold brick homes um but yeah i'm a big fan of this shoe i think this looks really cool it came out really well i love the lookbook I love the fact that they've got some authentic London people to model them as well. It's done with in situ too. Um, great setting, great backdrop. I think I dropped that look here with this guy wearing the neon sort of like track jacket with the Nike hat looks fucking banging. The colorways are done really well. And again, all the models in it look really nice too. So really, really well done. A real eclectic cast of models who really kind of um, represent the Nike 95 in the right way. Um, so they're due to come out when 110s. They're going to approximately retail for 110 just for that kind of special release. There's no actual date on them right there at the moment. It's to be announced. So let's see. I think it's going to be March. I think they announced it already. Let's check Foot Patrol's um, Instagram. I think they announced it already. They're going to release them in March. I'm pretty sure I saw something about March. Okay, you got. Uh, let's see if I can find them here. What's this here again? DJ Mantra. I don't know what that is about. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw something about March. Right? Was it March? One, here's a closer look. Remember that the in store online power raffle are now live on the blog. Online. So sign up. Okay, so 6th of March. You can definitely check those out. So yeah. A really good shoe. I'm a big fan of. I think they're going to do really well. So definitely check those out if you're that way inclined. Um, some two great 95s coming out very, very soon for those of you that love your 95s.